Welcome to this week's episode of That Pop Culture Show, where we explore everything and anything pop culture. We're your hosts. I'm Cody Frederick. I'm Jason DeBoard. Let's get poppin'. On today's pop profile, we have with us acclaimed actress, mm-hmm. Veronica Rosati. Veronica, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Well, thanks for coming to the show and, and, and sh- you know, schlepping over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Veronica, you are, you're, a, you're, you're an actress. You, you've been in things in America. You've been in things in Europe, primarily. Yeah. Uh, how did you kind of get started in that whole game? Well, I wanted to be an actress since I was a kid, and that was just my dream, and that was my obsession, and my parents just gave up at some point. When I was 13, <laughs> I um, basically, I, I, I told, I was, I went to classes since I was eight, acting classes. Okay. Oh, wow. My parents w- told me, you're not going to act in movies until you finish high school, which is like in Poland, you have to be 14, you're 14 when you finish high school. Oh. So yeah, there's a different, um, it's a different schooling system, but anyway, I finished school in May, and in in June, I got my first role. Wow. wow. (laughs) They were like, that went fast. Because they were hoping, okay, she's going to try and go audition, and then years will pass. She'll become a lawyer or something. (laughs) 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 Never happened. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so I started professionally acting since I was 14. And, um, yes, and then I just basically uh, followed all my inspirations, the actors that I admired, and I read their biographies, and I realized that I have to study in New York because I want to study studied a method. So I went to Lee Strasberg Institute yeah. when I was 20, 21. I also wanted to learn the language really well so I can act in English if it's necessary. And uh, that's how it started. Um, I just, but really how it started that I had a movie when I was 19 that I played the lead role. It, it, it was a Polish movie, but it was at the festival here, a Polish film festival. But they, uh, there was a manager, an American manager who came just to see the film and after the film he came up to me and he said he gave me his card and he says if you ever decide to be here just let me know but just get your green card you know so it took me time to get the green card but that's what I did I came here with the green card at some point and uh, we started auditioning and and then my first break um, I got cast by Michael Mann and uh, yeah so that was a pretty good story what was that it it was the uh, it was the show called uh, Luck on HBO right right so it was with Dustin, Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman right. and Nick He's Nolte. The, like the, the horse. Yeah, you know, it was the, horses, it's the, the horse races. Everybody's right? like, is that about the horses? I'm like, yeah, that's the, that's the one. That's that's exactly. But but that's more about gambling and gamblers. Sure. Um, and so we started with that. And then I kind of started doing a lot of stuff here. And then I got offers back in Europe. So I was just going back and forth, which is kind of tricky because you you, you can't really make a career either here or either there if you keep mm-hmm. traveling. But I just don't care about the career. I just, when I love a project, I'm just like, okay, bye. I just drop <laughs> everything and I just right. go and do the project. And then, you know, for the last few years, I've been a mother. So that's been pretty much my priority. And uh, my career has been kind of... Uh, something on the side but it's not going bad because i just had a movie that um, was at the venice film festival in the main competition yeah and uh, it's the polish candidate for the oscars um so uh yeah and we're still i i don't know when it's gonna this is gonna air but this is still kind of before the time of the promotion of everything and of the film and of the Oscars and so is um, it so it'll be promoted as a like a, a foreign language foreign film language film for the Oscars so they're for the Oscars and, wow but you know so what cool. you know what's really the most exciting thing for me and that's like you guys are gonna understand um, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm like yeah Oscars but yeah that's great but I was like when I learned <laughs> that our one of the other films that are is that is also considered for like best foreign language film but it's an Italian film mm-hmm. is with Sofia Lorenzo. So I'm like, since wow. that moment, I'm like, I just want to meet Sofia. I don't care about anything else. <laughs> I just want to. I right? just want to like go with her to the Oscars. I'm gonna be like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you're gonna need yeah. a date because it'll be there. Obviously, she makes you. Yeah, be if it if it <laughs> if it happens, if it if it. But I'm rooting for her. She's um yeah. she it's it's really considered. She's been having a break for a long time right so see that's the thing like we're supposed to talk about about me and i'm going to talk about all those actresses and you you're not going to stop me with that (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so so it's been uh her movie 
first movie in many many years and um in the predictions people predict that she's going to win best actress which would be um ba basically a record because she's the first actress uh foreign language mm -hmm. uh actress who got an oscar for best actress right. in a foreign language film hmm. oh, so wow. she would do that again if she gets oh, it interesting. yeah wow I mean, she's just, she's nailed down foreign language. Yeah, <laughs> she's nailed it. So maybe I'll take over. There's an American way to act, and then there's a foreign language way to act. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you got to be Italian. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's true. you got to be Sophia Loren, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Are you, you able to name the project? Do, yes, do it's called Never Gonna Snow Again. Uh, mm -hmm. And the director, is an, is, she's an amazing filmmaker. She, she won several film festivals back last few years from Berlin Film Festival. She was in Sundance and uh, Toronto. So she's very respected. So wow. I'm, I'm very hopeful for this project. I've been, I've, I was very happy to actually uh, do that because mm, <laughs> I got the offer and we started filming in uh, December and January and we closed down literally, literally two weeks before. I mean, we wrapped the movie two weeks before the COVID oh, wow. hit Europe. Wow. So that was my last project I did. Right. And I remember I was finishing this project. I was filming actually three things at the time because I, I got the software and I was I was lined up with some other stuff and I was like, no, I have to do it. So I was sometimes shooting two things at the, on right. the same day. Right. Wow. Yeah, so that was kind of a sleepless time. And I thought, yeah, I want to rest now. Like, I don't want to do anything. And then <laughs> COVID hit. And then, like, the last year, I'm not doing anything almost. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting when you jump into these projects because it is a, it's an investment of your time because you don't yeah. know what the project's going to look like when it's released, yeah. right? So you're dealing with But something. I saw the movie. Oh, you did? I did at the Venice Film Festival. And okay. we got it, like, that was honestly the most beautiful moment uh, during the COVID for me because we got a standing ovation and wow. the people in there were really the most amazing filmmakers from Europe and some Americans, Kate Blanchett was head, of, was head of the jury and we were just standing there and it, it was an amazing moment. Wow. You know, after yeah. months of being isolated, sure. this right. feels that you really appreciate stuff like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's something you'll not forget because A, it's in the time of COVID and yeah. it's something that's probably going to lead to the Oscars by the sounds of it. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know what, that would be great. But what I would really like to happen is this movie to be seen because I think it's very, also it's a very, it's a very deep movie about a lot of problems that are going on right now mm -hmm. uh, about, um, you know, um, basically ecology, about um, so many political issues. I don't even want to go into politics sure, right now, but sure. baby, <laughs> yeah. let's not. Let's let's just <laughs> let's stay with the fun stuff. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it just touches so many subjects. I feel like it's very universal. So uh, it got sold to many countries already after Venice. So I just oh, would like this movie to open and people to see it, especially in the times where theaters are endangered. Yeah. So do Absolutely. you know do you know what the distribution is going to be for that film in the U.S. or is it to be determined? They're keeping it secret from me because they know I would spill the beans here on this program. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's they're like, "Don't do. talk about the movie." <laughs> so, what, so as an actress, what is it like to work on three different films? concurrently like is it hard to sort of shift? schizophrenic yeah. yeah right right who am i today well uh you know the thing is it's not even an issue that i work on three pictures mm. it's just like uh i'm a mother and right. work on three pictures so uh, and i'm really devoted to her in a way that um she's with me all the time so 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 it's really challenging because i would sleep like two three hours a day and wake up at four to learn my lines Right. Um, so, so that's physically challenging, but on the other hand, it's, it's great. I just, I love my job so much. I love being on set. Um, and, uh, you know, I was shoot this film is very heavy. It's emotionally very heavy. Mm -hmm. And I was also shooting this kind of TV show that is like pretty much soap opera, something like a soap opera. It's very, it's not light, but it's something that is so much lighter. So mm -hmm. I would just right. get. I didn't know what to do because on, I was playing this part of this widow that I can say of this widow with like a lot of emotions going on. And then I was playing a part of like, I can't, can I swear? Or yeah, I yeah. Swear? go for it. Uh, like day. the total bitch. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, John Collins style in like the dynasty. And right. I just went from one set to another and I was just like, 
who am I today? <laughs> and then going back home and be like, okay, <laughs> back to normal. Right, right. right exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. you know, you can draw on that, you know. With the child, it's like, here's your Reiko, but I love you so much. No, no, no. <laughs> she's she's she is ruling the house. Oh, does she I'm, her, well, I'm her slave. That's well, I know when we talked recently, you said she's like a very Elizabeth Taylor like oh, character. Gosh. Yes. Right? Your oh daughter. My gosh. Yeah, that we keep <laughs> all the family keeps saying that. Well, I like the, one of the first things she really reacted to is like uh, she saw my mo my mother like she had a necklace with a diamond and my it's like the same story <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor had that's what petrifies me or you know she she's yeah she's very much I think she's a very very old soul right and um the funny thing is I have a beautiful portrait actually of Elizabeth Taylor in my house I have like old posters I love old posters so I have a beautiful portrait of her and when she was small she used to say mommy I'm like no that's not mommy but thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, that's awesome that's incredible her so name obviously is the uh, in honor of Elizabeth, of Elizabeth Taylor, Taylor right, yeah right so you're a fan well, uh, I'm I'm very much inspired by her. Um, okay. I have to say, I don't really like the word fan, mm -hmm. uh, especially I. You know, I've worked with so many of my idols. She's literally the only person from my <laughs> idol rooster <laughs> right. that I haven't met. Right, right, right. So um, I and you know I work with those people. I'm friends with some of the people. So I wouldn't like to call myself a fan. Sure. But you, you know she's she has um. She has fans also among great filmmakers and among great yeah. actors. Mm -hmm. She's so respected, uh, yeah. from especially by people who really knew her. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically I would I would rather say I'm a big fan of the old movies and a sure. big fan of great actresses. But yeah, I'm I, I mean, guess I'm her. You appreciate little her fan. work, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> She, like you said, she's an inspiration to to, to yourself yeah. and what you do, right? I yeah, mean, obviously, very that much. had to have motivated you to go into that industry as you grew up watching her movies. And it's true, others. but uh, I think when I was a kid, I was uh, I was very much a recluse because I kept changing schools because my dad had this work. He was a diplomat, so we we kept traveling, and I kept changing schools, so I didn't really have friends, and I just escaped to movies. And right. I would say I spent m much more time with the those great actors and Elizabeth Taylor in mm -hmm. her movies than with people I would just hide myself and watch everything I would just rent DVDs or back I'm still back in the days from the video cassettes <laughs> but yeah I'm VHS right so and I would just live in that world and dream of that world and and, and people would laugh at me kids would laugh at me and I'm like where am I now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's a, that's just I don't want to be mean, but basically it's a lesson that you should dream, Absolutely. because you really if you dream really hard, uh, things just come at you and the yeah. opportunities come come towards you because you really focus on you, all your energy to making those dreams come true and uh, and just opportunities come and you use those opportunities and that's all basically. So uh, dreaming, uh, you know, when you came to New York. Yeah. Were there? Was that the first time you've been in the United States? No, I actually lived in the United States when I was three, okay. and I believe that was the time when I fell in love. Well, actually, that's a longer story because my grandmother was American. Okay. So I think I have it in my blood, mm -hmm. and um, and when I was three, we lived in. We, my dad was teaching at Princeton, so we lived there for a year. And then um, when I started doing those TV shows in Poland when I was fourteen. I saved my money and I um, I said to my parents, I'm going to go every summer to the UCLA uh, English course classes wow. for uh, for foreigners mm -hmm. so I can learn English. And that's when I really met the old cinema because um, I came here and when I walked into, <laughs> I don't remember, that was like Samuel French or the, the book soup. Right. I was like. Holy shit! <laughs> I bought everything with every, the, all the rest of my money. I bought all the books. Yeah. I brought like two luggages of books, like Betty wow. Davis biography, and like all those uh, all those m books about movies and, and encyclopedias. And then kids, would, I mean kids, teenagers would just like go and party. And instead of me partying, I was either uh, working on a set or going to acting classes, going to dancing classes, or just reading books about the cinema. Right, right. So I was just like the weirdo, but <laughs> that got me here. It worked out. It, yeah. it did, yeah. So when you were younger, what, what element of movies and acting, like what was it that really inspired you? Like the idea of acting or the idea of, you know, becoming a star or like becoming part of 
pop culture? Like which, mm -hmm. what was sort of the inspiration for you? Uh, everything that you mentioned probably, but I think mostly it was just, uh, I felt like movies were better than life mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they were larger than life and they should right. be as Betty Davis would say. But, uh, basically it's something that I, I felt there's a magic in it that mm -hmm. I want to live in. Right. Like I said, I was escaping reality because I, I had a tough time. Right. So uh, for me, it was just uh, I, I've dreamt of being part of that magic. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything about making movies just m makes me, you know, uh, so excited. Uh, like the film set, even just the camera, it's just it's 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 the love of my life, really. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I think it is a. Uh, uh, it's a testament to anybody that that tries to go into that world. And the reality is, is what you see on the screen is a finished product of something that is mm -hmm. time and, and, and sweat and energy that people put into making right. these products. And very collaborative. And too. Very collaborative. Yeah. And it is that thing where yeah. you don't realize a lot of the time what is put into these movies mm -hmm. and the amount of time and the amount of energy yeah. and the number of people that are involved and all of those processes. So, right. you know, to be able to go into that yourself mm -hmm. uh, and then say, I want to be part of that dream. And then it's like you walk into that dream and you're like, oh my God, this is a nightmare, but I'm loving every yeah, minute of it. That's true. <laughs> and there is there is so much, I don't want to uh, you know, put off people uh, from acting, but it, there is so much rejection and failure yes. and disappointment because you will, even if you read the biographies of the greatest stars, we've all been rejected. Yeah. I mean, right. I literally speak to one of the greatest actors uh, that is living, you know, and he says, oh, damn it, you know, they wanted me for that show but then I started talking to the creator and the creator was like okay bye this is not right. for us and he f like everybody goes through that rejection yeah. no matter wh what what your position is no matter how much you yeah. achieve well, that's like yeah when so I went to grad school at Loyola Marymount for screenwriting right and I had to do some production stuff and I'm very much an introvert so I very like I have huge respect for actors because like I could never do it in a million years. But when we were working on these projects, we had to do little short films. So we had to uh, you know bring in actors that would right. audition. And I remember just sitting there and feeling like so uncomfortable because it's it's like people are just sort of bearing their soul yeah. to you in a way. Yeah. And you, your job on the other side is like sort of judging judging and rejecting yeah. so I, I found it very uncomfortable like I just but it made me respect that much more like the people that act and right for me it was weird because I was like you know just a college student and I was getting headshots and stuff from yeah. people that actually did real work and I felt like like I'm not worthy of them coming in to yeah. like work on audition a film, for something yeah, for, for nothing some basically. student project right. you know so it's it, it, like you're saying it's a very brutal business it and, is brutal and I think with the whole coronavirus thing and everything shutting down has got to be just that much more competitive because there's just not as it's much just work very now. heartbreaking because yeah. i had movies lined up and they were delayed and i just mm -hmm. love being like i said i just love being at work right. but you said you're an introvert and that actors actually are mostly introverts as well yeah they just uh you, you know now i'm very uh, outspoken and i'm i seem extrovert but i'm like right. i said i was a recluse and i still am i just you know when yeah. i'm not on set or I, I don't do my job i pretty much stay with my daughter in and yeah. we right. just like stay in our little cave you know right. it's actors are really um yeah. they, they're very insecure but i don't say it in a bad way right i say it in a good way because they're very well, emotional with your yeah feelings and yeah. yeah but i think even though there is so much um there's so much pain also that comes with this mm -hmm. profession um i it's very rewarding when when you really love it and you love doing movies uh it's like i said this moment even at the venice film festival was like one of those moments that you know, if you wouldn't go through all that um, yeah. tears and sweat right. and blood, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's I like mean, great sacrifice you know, and great. I know reward. the blood. Yeah, I, like had I had accidents. I had accidents. I did have accidents <laughs> on several <laughs> film sets. So yeah, so it's it's there's a lot going on sometimes, um, but it's magic. It's right. just magic. Right, especially when you can look back at it and be like, hey, collectively we did that. On to the next thing, which yeah. is nice when you're doing projects like mm -hmm. that because. Everything seems a little fresh and everything seems a little new. Yeah, but that's awful. Like, cause yeah, you're yeah. constantly changing. What's next? Right. right. What's true. next?
I mean, how that's do you, how a do, constant fear. How do you yeah. manage? How do you manage the idea of rejection and knowing like you don't know what tomorrow looks like? Mm-hmm. It's exciting, but it's also maddening. Right. Well, you know, um, I that's why I I have my life and right. my da- my daughter keeps me very grounded. Right. Uh, so uh, even now I'm I, like I really can't imagine this year not working and right. not having her. I would just go crazy. Right. You know, because I wouldn't have any uh substantial aim in life to do so but i've started also writing some projects and i have so so it kind of brings another way to you have to find a way to Mm -hmm. be creative um but it's uh yeah it's 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 just it's hard uh it basically being an actor is uh hard like i said because you never know what's going to be next and you never know you know there's a saying you're as good as your last movie but you mm. never know what the movie's going to be like and the right. problems like uh for example now that I ha- now that i have really a, a great movie that could really open a lot of doors for me there's the covid and nobody cares about movies and oscars you know right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of bad luck but um but also good luck because uh i feel uh that because of the covid People are, there's not so many movies and people are very much into watching European films and they they have more time to watch it, so. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we definitely hope it, you you kill it out there. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, not in like a, (laughs) hey, murderous European way, but you know what I mean. (laughs) Italian. (laughs) I know um, we saw each other recently at an auction. You keep seeing me every auction. (laughs) I. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about Italy. Yeah. And you have roots in Italy. I do. And so I was kind of thinking, um, just sort of as, as a general pop culture topic, about going somewhere that's foreign to you and sort of how much the pop culture of that place is apparent and how much it isn't. Like, I know when I go to Italy, like me and my wife, that's like our favorite place to go is Italy. Yeah. And it's not like it's screaming pop culture. Like there's culture. It's like historical. Yeah. And there's, um, you know, it's more about history and and the actual culture more than pop culture. But then like if you go to England or Japan or something, mm. it's like pop culture is just sort of everywhere. So I was kind of curious what your thoughts were on that. And also mm. as someone who was born outside of the United mm. States, sort of what your um, perception of it was. I mean, you said you were here as a child, but yeah. sort of as you started thinking about your career and everything, what what's your perception of what it would be like working here versus mm-hmm. what the reality of it is? And I know Cody, he has a background in acting as well. Mm-hmm. He came from outside of California. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd be I mean, honestly, yeah. I grew up watching too. Saved by the Bell, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is like this, uh, this ball of uh, pop culture of the 90s, right? That's right. what I grew up watching. So, you know, you're in Poland and Italy and then you come to the United States. Is everybody Zach Morris to you or not? <laughs> well, did you, did, was, there a, was there a Saved by the Bell in Poland? No, I there don't even a, know what it is. That's perfect. Yeah. That's amazing. That's fantastic. I but was watching Dynasty. You were watching or Dynasty? Like, at the, like Dynasty? 90210, for okay. example. Uh, yeah. 90210 is, the is Bundys. exactly that. Yeah, the Bundys. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So those were the things that were like shaping yeah. you as you were watching it, right? Well, very much. Well, you have to you have to uh, realize that American pop culture and films and TV shows are uh, definitely ruling uh, in Europe. They're they're oh, just very not only very respected and popular, but they they just they're more um, important than. Well, I can't say maybe about every country because France is different. They love each other. They everything <laughs> is French is the best, and I've lived in France, so and that's not a bad thing because they really right. support each other. They're right. very strong in their, you know, they're uh, united. There's they're very good, united, yeah, yeah. and they're like French is the best. Okay, right, I remember right, I have right. a French Asian, and every time she says, "Oh, I saw that movie. It's awful. It's American. It's like typically American," <laughs> and she's like, "But uh, do you know the French movie? This is great. This is uh, so uh, like." everything and I love that I love that about them right. you know because this is something that I would love also for any of a culture culture to have that they support each other and mm-hmm. the rest should be as like should be just welcome sure right. but not the most important thing so uh, I've grew up definitely in Poland uh, I mean when I was growing up in Poland I grew up in different places I grew up in Switzerland as well in America as well but when I was in Poland um, it there is a very 
America seems like a dreamland mm -hmm. and basically uh, a place like a better place in a way. Right. So anything that was American is everybody is wow, you know. So so whenever there was, for example, it's, it's but I, I don't know, for some reason, I just remember when Ricky Martin came to Poland uh -huh. and I had tickets for like, a, it was like a private show. Uh -huh. And I, for me, because I, I went to concerts before and I saw some stars in, in Hollywood, I was like, yeah, well, whatever. But people were like, oh my God, this is like an American, whatever, you know, international <laughs> star. And, and you just He's walk up the Jesus. streets. Yeah, you walk, oh, especially you took off the shirts, so that, that was wild. But, <laughs> Ricky. Yeah, but, you know, so I, I see how people react. Yeah. Uh, so whenever, uh, you know, when I did a movie with the, with the Al Pacino, uh, like for a year, people didn't ask me anything else in Poland. But like, <laughs> so how was it working with Al Pacino? <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's great. He's a great person. But I, but it's just I see there is such a huge appreciation, which is great mm -hmm. as well, uh, for uh, for American movies. Right. But, but uh, I feel here maybe it's LA, but I don't think so because I go to the TCM Film Festival every year whenever mm -hmm. I can. Uh, there is a huge respect uh, for American cinema, right. basically as the history, as classic cinema. Right. And uh, I don't feel, uh, people don't know in Europe who Betty Davis is. They don't know who Joan Crawford is. Mm, sure. I mean, in France, yes. It was before more the artistic. American arm could come over right. and really It's influence. the very modern pop culture that right. gets to Europe. Right. And I feel like here, it's, there is a big, um, there's a big respect and there is a big knowledge Sure. of uh, of the roots, for right, example, right, of the American right. cinema and of, you know, literature, music. So in when you're in Poland or you're growing up in Poland, or you're growing up in Italy, wherever it is at that time. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the things with America, because we kind of have pushed ourselves out there, especially from a mass comm standpoint, mm -hmm. and we've kind of put ourselves in people's living rooms, it's mm -hmm. uh, it affects obviously like what you're saying, how they perceive us in uh, America's this dreamland, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah. oh, that's what it is. And that's, it's funny, because that really shows the power of media mm -hmm. in its right. own right, it right? Does. And it shows like, well, people for many years have always thought yeah. America's this dreamland. That's not, I don't necessarily think that the world sees that now, uh, but I could, be, I mean, it is still, right. it still is probably in a better place than a lot of yeah. places right. that are much worse but off. Probably pre internet. But pre internet, yeah, it's when, not as, you know, when television and film had that much more power because that's right. how people were receiving. I just think basically you know? people think of America as a place where you, everything can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be anything. And uh, it's just uh, like a promised land of, you know, countless opportunities that people don't really have everywhere all over the world right. we know that there are issues and that sure. not everything is perfect right. and uh life in america is also uh it's not that easy it's uh it's it's also complicated but um and you also i have a lot of actors friends who came from poland and tried to be here right. and they said this is not for me this right. is too much right it's like Really? It's, yeah, it's because it, they get overwhelmed by by the th not only the life because you really have to know how. To, I know for right. you guys, it's like you've been used to it, but it's so different. And the other thing is also because um, there is so much competition right. in every field that uh, people just gave up. That scares them off. They they rather go back to Poland and be a star in Poland than going through like starts from from scratch right. in here right, right. which is something i did so the, so i that's interesting you bring that up because i yeah. was going to ask you uh, know for you that transition from european actress to i want to make it in the big pictures mm -hmm. like what was you know what were what were some of those challenges to be for you? honest that's not really what, what what my thought was or uh, my aim uh, -huh. uh basically like i said the manager offered me to you know to, to work with me and i just wanted all my life to live in California. I was always in love with California. And uh, I love the heat. I love, you know, <laughs> I love the beach. I'm very much Italian in that sense. So uh, it was just a great reason to move here. Sure. Um, and I felt, yeah, I'd love to try it here. And sure. things just, like I said, the opportunities just came up to me. 
So, um, and of course, I when I wasn't acting uh, here, I was just taking classes or workshops. I was just doing something in the meantime all the time. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So well, and out in out in Los Angeles, getting into an acting class or taking part of that, there's a lot of options out there, right? No, there's so many options, and uh, also the thing is when you're raised. Uh, changing uh, homes all the time and changing countries you're not afraid right to move right. somewhere and be by yourself change. and i yeah. was by myself i was 22 and i was just you know by myself i rented a place and i just had my little yorkie and and <laughs> uh and that's how we that's how it started oh that's awesome yeah i mean do you feel that there's now that you've got a daughter has it kind of has that kind of upended the, the style that you've experienced before? I mean, obviously that's very different, right? It is different and it's not. Like I right. said, I was always a home person. I just would rather stay and watch TCM or read books and I just do my job. And uh, I wasn't very, I, I'm not a person who loves to go out all the time. But yes, yeah, since I have my daughter, it's, you know, life evolves around her. Sure. So as you all know, because yeah, yeah, you have a yeah. son. Um, but it's not that much different. I just basically do the same thing. You're still at home, but now you just got to feed another mouth. Yeah, and, exactly. You know. <laughs> but you got that. company. Yeah, I do have company. That's that true. screams and yells and cries. <laughs> you know, but they laugh and they smile and they play too. So yeah. there's always happiness, right, Jason? You're happy. <laughs> yes. See, there we go, smiling, Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, but I guess you know when you want to make it work, you'll make it work, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Each week, we ask the question, do you want to touch it? Well, this week, Veronica's pulled a rabbit out of her hat. Veronica, <laughs> what did you bring? <laughs> so um, I brought uh, some uh, nice goodies from some ladies. Uh, so basically, these are two, uh, a pair of earrings, two okay. pair of earrings from Loretta Young. Okay. So uh, I, like I said, I really love actresses, mm -hmm. and uh, Loretta is not really one of my favorite, but... You know, it's it's like a thing. Basically, I have to have something from everybody. You right, know, right, right. it's like and basically it's like not my favorite brand, but I, I want it as well. So, <laughs> so but yeah, but I I just love collecting jewelry. Um, I'm gonna get into more because this is like the most. Mm -hmm. This is something that I will never ever let go of. I mean, I never take it off. It's been a year, but still, <laughs> I ha haven't taken it off at all. Like, and, at and, what, all. and what are I we really looking at? I really had a fight on set with my director. <laughs> and she's like, you can't play with diamonds. This is not your character. Because this is Elizabeth Taylor. It's like, Ring. A, it's like a homeless person. It's like, like a different homeless. person. Yeah, it's like, she's a widow. She's not happy. She's miserable. She's poor. I'm like, no. But uh, our deal was that she was she was wearing it. And I said, you're wearing it. You're responsible for it. So, so this was the only time I took it off. But yeah, this is Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. And this is, uh, the funny thing is, that's her design. Mm -hmm. She designed it. And basically, there is an inscription inside saying Taylor. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. So, this is my lucky charm. I uh, I always have it with me. I also have on me her dress. Oh, wow. Yeah, which I had to, it was large. So, <laughs> I gave it to, uh, I, I went to have it adjusted. Uh -huh. So, to have it like small so that I can, I can wear it. So basically what I'm trying to say is I love buying stuff that I can wear. Right. And uh, so that's basically, there's only a few items here, but I bought so many things apart from the table, which I can't wear, but I thought like <laughs> it's going to be cool to have it. Uh, but um, I love stuff that I, that I basically just can have on me. Yeah. Uh, and so does that most make of you the stuff feel like closer to the actress the I, I think it's just about energy like okay. I would I like to have someone's energy and just like and you know it's just uh so cool like I was like I said I was at the Venice Fan Festival and someone was like well, those earrings are amazing they're Elizabeth Taylor's <laughs> you know and it was like ah! jaw dropping this is like an additional thing I think this is like uh, the coolest thing you can say. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's it's like you buy something or you or you receive something that yeah. actually is connected to something that actually, if you're in a rough spot socially, you got to get out of it, <laughs> and you'd be like, oh well. By the way, these, yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Can, so that yeah. that's really impressive for people. But uh, I just, I think those th things also have this very special, like I said, energy sure. about 
about those people who own the, uh, right. mm-hmm. those things. So, for example, I um, I'm very much I'm a, I'm a very spiritual person. So that's why I got the book. Uh, from the, it's a Deepak Chopra book mm-hmm. that is signed uh, for Elizabeth Taylor. So that's her book. Wow. That oh, was great. from her collection. Okay. So I wanted to have something also on the bookshelf, like the intellectual, like, oh yeah, that's Elizabeth Taylor, from Elizabeth Taylor's <laughs> library. <laughs> oh, you, you know? want to talk cellular healing? <laughs> exactly. No problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> atomic healing? <laughs> Deepak Chopra and I have had long conversations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I just wanted to have something for, uh, like, I also have her cups, coffee cups. Okay. Uh, so one of them, my brother broke. <laughs> yeah, because I had three, and one of them was a gift. The other one, my daughter broke, and the third one, I'm keeping like very safe. <laughs> but I drink case. coffee every day from that cup, and I feel like this is a special cup, you know. Mm-hmm. I love this bag. It's uh, I I actually when I was bidding on stuff, I saw this bag, and it's navy blue, and I mm-hmm. never wear uh, navy blue, and it was just in the it was just like it was just on the display right and i just saw it i was like yeah i have other bucks shoes i'm not gonna get it and then the bidding started <laughs> and i'm like i can't sit okay bid <laughs> and then i was like and then i want it i was like okay um i'm not that's enough with the bags and then the machino came yeah and the black machino which i also didn't plan on buying and then because i already had two diamond bags from but you, before but you were in the room right in but i was in the room yeah, and then, then machino came and people were like bidding and not enough i was like this is a joke bid yeah. you know <laughs> and i just got four bags which i still think it's not enough and like my family thinks i'm crazy like four bags is not enough from elizabeth taylor i'm like it's never enough from elizabeth taylor hey you can't uh you can't you can't disregard that she had style you know yeah. and she like that style. makes it easier to wear and yeah. want to have the things she had because yeah. she was definitely she defined an era in a lot of ways yeah uh, so how did cool. how did your collecting start what was the first thing that you bought so, that you would think would classify as like a collectible or memorabilia or something well now uh now basically that i discovered julian's i think i'm like <laughs> <laughs> your number one customer. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i just call i just call them every time i'm like is there elizabeth taylor stuff but it started uh before um many years ago i think i was maybe 22 23 and the first thing i got was well basically when i was 12 I got... Wow, that's um, a 10-year gap we just jumped. No, 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 but, but this is something... I know, but this is something I got. My, my father was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Michael Jackson had a concert in Warsaw, mm-hmm. and I was like, if you're not getting me tickets, I'm like, this is the end of like our friendship, and you're, I'm, I'm to not going to be your daughter. You said this to your dad. Yes. Yeah, you were so tough-talking him. I, I was it. tough-talking him. He got me the tickets, <laughs> and I persuaded him to get me into this concert he was supposed to attend. Okay like private concert so i got there like and a I, private michael jackson concert. no 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 it oh. was like a private uh, piano concert okay. that he attended and uh i was sitting next to him and you know i was a 12 year old so i just had like <laughs> a copy of the history album mm-hmm. and i was like can you sign it and he signed it and i think this was the first thing i had oh, like wow. the, the really? first thing is the autograph of michael jackson and then it just like kind of started I, I i was like wow this is like so cool to have and um and then i met a lot of people and i would just not really i, I don't take autographs from people from just stars sure. i would just like when someone was for example jane fonda i mm-hmm. would go to her book signing and just or like to her play and make her like sign on the well, on like the playbill. Sure. So I wanted to have um, not just an autograph, but something that um, is really like a memorabilia. Right. right. Um, and uh, I met Ernie um, Bornine. Oh, did you really? I did, and I, so I brought the book. Then I was I actually interviewed him. I I was doing. Okay, when I was like 25, <laughs> that's another lifetime. But when I was 25, I I was writing articles about the classic cinema and inter- and I got to interview a few people from the classic cinema for Polish Press. Mm-hmm. So Ernie agreed on an interview and you know, it was great because he invited me home sure. and it, like he like, I was holding the Marty Oscar mm-hmm. and uh, and basically I brought his book and he signed it for me. And that I, and then I got a really I thought like let's collect books like with signatures. Sure. But I'm I I I wanted to have something um, from people that obviously are well, they're d- dead. Right. Sure. <laughs> you know, because I felt like this was really the the ones that are that is really really rare. So I would 
uh, collect portraits of um, movie stars from like 40s, 50s. Like I had, I have everybody from yeah. Ava Gardner, Lauren Bacall, Betty Davis, John Crawford. Well, John Crawford, that was my first bid. <laughs> that was the first time I had to actually fight for something <laughs> because um, they were selling, I, I don't remember, it might have been eBay or something, but um, they were selling her book, uh, her, her book, which is called My Way, My Way of Life, and it was signed by her. So I was bidding on that and I mm -hmm. got the book and that was the first thing. But it really started um, with like stuff. <laughs> I follow everything that has to do with Elizabeth Taylor. And when I saw there, I was like, What? Her estate is putting stuff on sale. I was like, re for three months, <laughs> my family, I thought they're going to literally kill me. We're going to do Because a there was no other week. subject. <laughs> right. No, you know, but you know, the thing is, I flew in for this and I had to leave on the last day. I, I had to miss the last right. day because I started filming my Venice Film Festival mm -hmm. thing. Oh, wow. And I remember how I got so angry that I have to leave. <laughs> I said to my parents, I'm not coming back. And they were like, are you crazy? You got to go back to work. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so I really flew in for them. I mean, I live here, but I was actually working in Poland at the time. So I flew in just for this. Wow. And I made my boyfriend flew in for this as well, which was very painful for him. Because <laughs> he loves Elizabeth Taylor. No, he loves Elizabeth Taylor. But, uh, I, you know, I was like, okay, these are my Christmas gifts. <laughs> my birthday gifts, my next Christmas gifts. You're making it easy. Right, right. right. I, I made it really hard on him. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so um, so that was very exciting. I have to tell you that being in a live auction is so different. Yeah, it's sure. I I mean I get I guess that people get really excited and get adrenaline when they're like speeding in their Porsche. I just get excited when I have the bidding thing, or like the, the bidding paddle. paddle. And like, <laughs> and the, the and the lot I'm interested yeah. in, and I never show which I'm in, interested in, just because you gotta. It's like right. poker game, oh, yeah. right, right. And then I always love the moment when um, those guys who are amazing, by the way, they're like, uh, and three, and they're about to say sold, and I'm like. Bed, <laughs> and that's like the most exciting moment. And then when you're a winner, it's like I. But I. So the, what I wanted to say online the third day when I was so I went back from set and you guys were right. were doing the third day on Elizabeth Taylor. I had this bag chosen. It's a Dior bag. I'm still gonna get it one day. <laughs> but basically, I wanted this bag so badly from from like the beginning right. and I was doing it online and my internet broke up oh. and I lost the bag so that's why I'm saying like you really being in person is so yeah. much different and they also it's just fun and those guys are so much yeah. fun as well yeah. so the auctioneers are really good yeah time. doing yeah. it in person is like very different than bidding on yeah, yeah. so I remember the first live auction I went to and you know you're sitting there waiting and you, and you haven't bid before and you yeah. don't really know what you're doing and I remember like this piece came up and I was like and you know, he took my bid and I just kept my hand up and he's like, I got your bid. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to lose. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to keep my hand up till it's sold. So. Well, I made an idiot out of myself, but I won. So, so me and my boyfriend, we're playing good cup and bad cup during the bidding. Cause oh. my boy, cause I told him about this ring. I said, this is a gift from him. I said, if you don't get me this ring, like this is over. <laughs> and no he was like, he was petrified because this ring is so beautiful. And right. like, we didn't know also like for how much it's going to go. Yeah, you, but never know. you never yeah. know. It's really unpredictable, but this, th this didn't matter. I mean, this, I was like, this doesn't matter, dude. Okay. <laughs> this is not, it, money is not an issue. You want this? <laughs> I need that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But so he was so nervous because he flew in from obviously uh, very far away to for this auction right. and basically to be around during that time and uh <laughs> so uh, but he the moment the ring came up he was like i was like hold it <laughs> <laughs> he's like but we're gonna lose i'm like hold it <laughs> and then we waited for the like the last moments right. to get in because i was like let's wait and see let them play their cards right. <laughs> you know that's right and we gotta play it right and and so we lit we really got apart from that bag that yeah. i basically missed because of the internet being bad and i thought i won it you mm -hmm. know i thought it was like because you click and you're like Right. You know, and yeah. then it just doesn't you work. You wish there was a physical button. There. Yeah, right. you know, exactly. But because you don't know anymore if it's outbid or something. Right. So apart from that, we really got everything <laughs> here on the floor. Yeah. Well, that's great. 
So good for Victory. you. Victory. Yeah. So so <laughs> I really sweet. recommend coming here and it's just in it's really fun also to be among people who are uh, who are passionate about those stuff and know about those things and know yeah. about the items because right. you know you 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 know certain things like you know oh this bag she wore it at the globes or something right mm -hmm. but i mean it's it's just fans of 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 that that is important to be uh to be part of uh of it's like a community basically sure. yeah, absolutely it's, it's yeah. exactly what it is and then this last did you talk about these these two earrings are from loretta young they are they're both from yeah. loretta young both okay. from loretta okay. young okay. Okay, yeah cool so i like i said i love uh jewelry i have i have also elizabeth taylor's earrings mm -hmm. and i mean i love to collect jewelry because jewelry is something that is uh timeless obviously right yeah, so uh, I thought at the auction. Well, with Loretta, it's just like I said. It's I'm ne I'm not such a great fan, but the auction was was like happening. I'm I'm like I have to get something. I right. Have to, like, <laughs> something. And and so I thought the jewelry is gonna be the coolest. And uh, yeah, and I love them because they're they're now it's like even when I bought them a few months, it was like half a year ago. Um, they they I was like yeah they're a bit vintage, but now when you see like the fashion is really going sure. so much yeah. like Towards inspired more of a, of by a like the stuff. 70s and yeah. these are very 70s 80s yeah. Yeah. earrings so they're Absolutely. back and yeah thank you for joining us on this week's episode of that pop culture show join us next week when jason and i debate the trappings of van life keep on talking. Uh, 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 uh,